so to now i'm going to talk about uh, calcium through my tutorial uh, just wanted to reiterate this all this uh, we'll be showing uh, vegetarian and non vegetarian recipes of all these nutrients but uh, they are of course meant for adult uh, but uh, young children you know you can we have created different recipes for young children starting from 7 months of age you know completion of 6 months of age uh, but older children say from 9 to 9 months onward they can uh, eat some of this uh, uh, recipes that we have created but this, uh, it's normally it is meant or primarily it is meant for adults Okay, so just want to reiterate it. So today I'm going to uh, discuss about calcium. Uh, look at what is the use of calcium. Uh, I do recommend that people get calcium mainly from food. Uh, yes, pregnant mothers will need calcium uh, because the requirement is high. But uh, for uh, primarily for most of the, most of the people. Uh, we recommend that uh, calcium comes from food rather than supplements uh, because there are a lot of studies which are done which showed that uh, if on uh, taking calcium supplements uh, you know they do have uh, more risk of uh, you know calcification in coronary arteries you know specifically in men so uh, do i don't recommend taking calcium Uh, just look at all this recipe. Include dairy. Include some seeds which are high in calcium. Some leafy vegetables which are very high in calcium. You know, uh, some of this uh, seafood are high in calcium too. So just uh, have a look and see what uh, what you can learn from it. Thank you. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of calcium. In this tutorial. we will learn about role of calcium and its requirement in our body symptoms of its deficiency and calcium rich food sources calcium is the most abundant mineral in our body 99% of the body's calcium is found in bones and teeth the remaining 1% is present in our blood it gets excreted from our body through stool urine and sweat calcium serves many functions in our body the key function is the development and maintenance of bones if there is an excess of calcium in the body it gets deposited in the bones in case of deficiency it can be taken from the bones calcium is essential for the transfer of nerve signals in our body it helps in muscle contraction and its movement it also helps in stopping the blood flow after a cut calcium is needed for the secretion of hormones like insulin and adrenaline other benefits are maintaining body weight blood pressure and heart health daily recommended intake for calcium varies for different age groups it is higher during periods of rapid growth such as childhood and adolescence for infants until 12 months 500 mg of calcium per day is recommended for children up to 9 years 600 mg per day is recommended The requirements increase up to 800 mg per day during adolescence. For adults it is 600 mg per day. The calcium requirements are also high during pregnancy and lactation. During pregnancy and lactation 1200 mg is recommended. Let us now discuss the effects of calcium deficiency deficiency of calcium during pregnancy can result in a rise in blood pressure swelling in hands and feet can be seen inadequate calcium intake by mothers may affect the baby also their birth weight may be low and their growth can be retarded their physical and cognitive development can be damaged in children calcium deficiency can cause rickets rickets is a disorder of the skeletal system 
the growth gets stunted and there are changes in the shape of the spine. Other signs are sunken ribs, protruding forehead and bow-shaped bent legs. Short height, widening of the wrist, elbow knee and ankle joints can be seen. In adults, early signs of calcium deficiency are muscle cramps. Numbness or tingling sensation of fingers is also seen. Mental confusion, irritability, dry skin, brittle nails and tooth decay can also occur. Long-term deficiency of calcium can result in osteoporosis. In osteoporosis, the bone density is reduced. The bones become fragile and prone to fractures. Other symptoms are stooped posture, loss of height and back pain. The risk of osteoporosis is higher in women as compared to men. This is because estrogen levels in women decrease after menopause. Thereby, calcium absorption decreases and its excretion through urine increases. To avoid calcium deficiency, Adequate intake of calcium-rich food is essential. The best sources are milk and milk products. This includes curd, paneer, cheese and khoya. Calcium obtained from them gets easily absorbed in our body. 200 ml of cow's milk provides 236 mg of calcium. 100 grams of curd from cow's milk has 150 milligrams calcium. 30 grams of paneer from cow's milk has 142 milligrams calcium. Few non-vegetarian food are also rich in calcium. For example, dried shrimp, bombay duck, prawns, lobsters and dried bony fishes. 100 grams of prawns will give 67 mg of calcium. 20 grams of dried shrimp has 73 mg of calcium. 15 grams of dried bombay duck fish has 208 mg of calcium. Seeds are an excellent source of calcium. For example, sesame seeds, niger seeds, flax seeds, dill seeds and poppy seeds. 1 tablespoon or 5 grams of sesame seeds has 64 milligrams of calcium. Apart from these, nuts like almonds and walnuts are also rich in calcium. Many green leafy vegetables have good amount of calcium. For example, leaves of amaranth, agathi, drumstick and fenugreek. Even radish leaves Colocasia leaves and mustard leaves are good sources. 100 grams of amaranth leaves has 330 milligrams of calcium. 100 grams of fenugreek leaves has 274 milligrams of calcium. Calcium is present in some beans like soya bean, horse gram and mott beans. 50 grams of horse gram gives 135 milligrams of calcium. Finger millet is also a rich source of calcium. 30 grams of finger millet provides 110 milligrams of calcium. Along with food intake, calcium absorption is equally important. Presence of oxalates, phytates and fiber affect calcium absorption. They are present in nuts, seeds, beans and green leafy vegetables. These substances may bind with calcium to form an insoluble complex. As a result, calcium absorption in the body is inhibited. The absorption can be enhanced by using various cooking techniques. For example, soaking, sprouting, boiling, roasting and Fermentation For calcium absorption, avoid tea, coffee and cola with calcium-rich food. 
they contain caffeine which enhances calcium excretion through urine. For maximum calcium absorption, few other nutrients are required. For example, vitamin D, magnesium, potassium and phosphorus. Apart from nutrients, adequate physical activity and exercise are also required. This will enhance the bone mass and bone strength. In addition to all this, age also influences calcium absorption. It is highest during infancy and childhood. During adulthood, absorption is moderate and then it decreases with age. Therefore, adequate intake of calcium-rich food from an early age is essential. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. So, uh, we watched uh, calcium, uh, but now we are going to watch uh, vitamin D. Why do we need vitamin D? One of the most important uh, uh, vitamin that we need, you know, for our body. Uh, vitamin D is actually... Uh, most of your vitamin D you get it from sun, you know. But there is a myth uh, in the community that uh, morning sun gives you vitamin D. Uh, and I want to kind of break that myth and uh, let community know that it's not morning sun which will give you uh, vitamin D from the sun, but it would be, uh, say, mid-afternoon. So uh, just remember that, you know, whenever you talk to any, any of your uh, you know mothers or family members or whoever you know uh, patients uh, it's from 11 to around 2 to 30 p.m. in at least our country uh, second thing is you know uh, not many people know that the windows which we have glass windows uh, that will prevent uh, UVB uh, radiation to come in you know uh, so we need to make sure that you know if you want to get exposed to sun it should be direct sunlight not not through glass windows uh, there are few uh, food which you can get vitamin d from um, generally i prefer you know dried mushrooms so if you have access to mushrooms you can just basically dry it in sun and those dry mushroom is they are high in vitamin d uh, another important aspect of vitamin d is that it helps in a lot of uh, functions in the body you know especially uh, in calcium metabolism uh, in calcium absorption and also another thing what it does is uh, it helps in immunity it helps in prevention of cancer it does pretty much so many things actually you know so we have created this tutorial it took us a long time to make this you know we have done a lot of research so do do understand uh, about vitamin d uh, we still don't have uh, tutorials on recipes but I think the best recipe that you can have is to get exposed to sun and do that for young children also young babies you know because they need their bones are growing and they need vitamin D so what I recommend is just maybe 15 minutes or so you know expose them to uh, sun uh, don't make them wear too many clothes you know make sure that uh, the eyes are not exposed to sun you know so don't make them look at sun you know it should be up in opposite direction uh, exposure to skin is important not uh, i mean you're normally you know i don't recommend making them wear too many clothes when they are or another thing what i recommend in the community is to do massage because they do a lot of this children massage baby massage so i tell them they do it in the sun outside at around 11 11 30 you know so that way babies are getting that beautiful uh, you know uh, touch you know, skin to skin touch also and they get massage uh, and of course exposure to vitamin d so enjoy and let me know how you how you like this tutorial thank you welcome to the spoken tutorial about the importance of vitamin d in this tutorial we will learn about role of vitamin d in the body symptoms of its deficiency Recommended Intake Food Sources Let us begin by briefly understanding what is vitamin D. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. It exists in two forms, vitamin D3 and vitamin D2. 
D3 is mainly produced by the skin on exposure to UVB rays from sunlight. UVB is known as ultraviolet B rays. It is one of the three types of sun rays. You can also get small amounts of D3 from non-vegetarian foods. Vitamin D2, however, is present in a few vegetarian foods. Supplements of both vitamin D2 and D3 are available in the market easily. Interestingly, vitamin D obtained from all these sources is inactive. To become active, it has to undergo two processes. First process of activation is in the liver and the second is in the kidney. Active form of vitamin D, also known as calcitriol, is formed in the kidney. Once vitamin D gets activated, it plays several roles in the body. One of the major roles is formation and maintenance of strong bones. Another is the absorption of calcium in the intestine. Maintaining the levels of calcium and phosphate in the blood is another role. These two nutrients are required for growth and repair of bones. They help in maintaining the correct bone density in our body. Apart from bones, they also help in maintaining strong teeth and muscles. Vitamin D is an immunomodulator. This means that it helps in controlling and supporting the immune system. It helps to activate the body's natural response to fight diseases. Vitamin D protects the body against several respiratory infections. For example, pneumonia, influenza, tuberculosis and COVID-19. Reduction in inflammation in the body is aided by vitamin D. Its other properties are to protect the body from viruses, bacteria and fungi. Vitamin D is found to improve insulin sensitivity. Therefore, it helps in managing diabetes, blood pressure and body weight. It also maintains good heart health. It does so by helping in relaxation of blood vessels in the heart. For many other functions in the body, vitamin D is essential. For example, cell division, brain development and prevention of cancer. If the requirements of vitamin D are not met, there can be a deficiency. Let us see what factors put someone at risk for vitamin D deficiency. Inadequate exposure to sunlight is one of the major risk factors. UVB rays from sunlight are required to produce vitamin D in the skin. Glass windows block these UVB rays in the house. Hence, people with limited exposure to sunlight are at a risk of deficiency. For example, old people and people mostly working indoors. Vitamin D deficiency is common in winter or in regions with cold climates. The risk of deficiency is high in dark-skinned people. They have high amounts of a pigment called melanin in their skin. This reduces the ability of their skin to produce vitamin D from sunlight. They require longer exposure to sunlight as compared to light-skinned people. Inadequate intake of vitamin D from the diet is another risk factor. Additionally, vitamin D requires fat for its absorption. 
Hence, people with reduced ability to absorb fat can suffer from deficiency. This can occur in people with gallbladder or intestinal diseases. Individuals with liver or kidney diseases are also at a risk of deficiency. Conversion of vitamin D to active form takes place in the kidney and liver. Hence, people with liver or kidney diseases are also at a risk of deficiency. Obese people and those who have had bypass surgery can also become deficient. Pregnant and breastfeeding mothers need vitamin D for the fetus and the infant. Otherwise, the mother is at risk of becoming deficient in vitamin D. Next, let us understand the effects of vitamin D deficiency. Signs of deficiency may vary with severity and age group. Some of the general signs are fatigue, mood swings and poor immunity. Muscle cramps, spasms and seizures are also seen. Without adequate vitamin D, bones become thin, soft and brittle. Low vitamin D impairs the immune system. Thus, there is an increased chance of catching infections. It also results in an increase in inflammation in the body. All this makes a person more susceptible to getting infected with COVID-19. The severity of effects of COVID-19 and death due to it rises with deficiency. The risks of several cancers also increase due to the deficiency of vitamin D. Cancer of colon, prostate and breast are a few examples. Low vitamin D levels can raise the risk of multiple sclerosis. It is a condition in which protective covering of the nerve is damaged. This disrupts the communication between the brain and body. It affects the brain, spinal cord and optic nerves. Deficiency of vitamin D during pregnancy can result in a rise in blood pressure. It can have negative effects on the baby also. There can be an increased risk of premature birth and low birth weight babies. Babies born to mothers with vitamin D deficiency will also be deficient. Vitamin D deficiency can cause rickets in infants and children. Rickets is a disorder of the skeletal system. The growth gets stunted and there are changes in the shape of the spine. Other signs are sunken ribs, protruding forehead and bow-shaped bent legs, widening of the wrist, elbow, knee and ankle joints can be seen. Children with rickets are also at a risk of getting infectious disease. There is a delay in tooth eruption. A pot belly and an abnormal walk is also seen. Muscle pain, irritability and increased sweating are other signs. In adolescents and adults, deficiency causes osteomalacia. It is a condition of weakening and softening of bones. The bones become easily prone to fractures. Severe pain in back, hips, pelvis and legs can occur. Other signs include muscle weakness and spasms. To avoid deficiency, getting adequate vitamin D is important. For infants of 0 to 12 months, 400 international units or 10 micrograms per day is recommended. 600 international units or 15 micrograms per day is recommended for people of age group 1 
to 70 years. This includes children, adolescents, adults, pregnant and lactating mothers. For men and women above 70 years, 800 international units or 20 micrograms is recommended. Many experts recommend much higher doses. Let us now learn how to get adequate vitamin D. Our body can produce it on exposure to UVB rays of the sunlight. The best time to get maximum UVB rays is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 15 to 20 minutes of daily exposure to midday sunlight is recommended. For dark-skinned people, 3 to 5 times longer exposure in sunlight is needed. Approximately 10,000 international units of vitamin D is generated during this time. Note that the body can't make vitamin D if you are seated indoors by the window. This is because the glass blocks the UVB rays. Hence, you should get sunlight from outdoors. You can even keep the windows open and let the sunshine in. Next, let us look at food sources of vitamin D. Only a small amount of vitamin D can be obtained from foods, among which fish are the best sources. For example, sardine, herring, black pomfret, salmon and cod. 100 grams of sardines has 3.5 micrograms of vitamin D. 100 grams of herring fish has about 5 microgram of vitamin D. Other seafood like prawns and crabs also have little amounts of vitamin D. 100 grams of prawns have about 1 microgram. Other non-vegetarian sources of vitamin D are egg yolk and chicken liver. 100 grams of chicken liver has about 2.6 micrograms of vitamin D. Two egg yolks of about 40 grams have nearly 1.3 micrograms. Few vegetarian foods have vitamin D. For example, mushroom, soya bean, finger millet, sesame seeds. 100 grams of mushroom has around 20 micrograms. 50 grams of soya bean has 33 micrograms. However, along with intake, absorption is very important. Vitamin D3 is better absorbed and used in the body as compared to D2. Hence, sunlight and non-vegetarian food are best sources of vitamin D. Please consult your doctor before taking any supplements. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Welcome to the Spoken Tutorial on Calcium-Rich Vegetarian Recipes. In this tutorial, we will learn about food sources of calcium, cooking techniques to enhance calcium absorption, preparation of calcium-rich vegetarian recipes, calcium content of these recipes. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in our body. 99% of the body's calcium is found in bones and teeth. The remaining 1% is present in the blood. The role of calcium in our body has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for these tutorials. Adequate intake of calcium through diet is necessary from an early age. Dairy products are excellent sources of calcium. This includes milk, curd, paneer, cheese and khoa. Calcium is also present in some nuts, seeds, legumes and green leafy vegetables. Along with a calcium-rich diet, calcium absorption by the body is also important. 
calcium absorption can be enhanced using soaking, sprouting and fermentation. Even boiling, roasting and other cooking techniques will help. Note that in all the recipes shown in this tutorial, one cup is 200 milliliters. The first recipe is sprouted finger millet dosa. Ingredients required to prepare this recipe are 1 fourth cup or 30 grams of finger millet, 1 fourth cup or 30 grams of split black gram, half teaspoon fenugreek seeds, half teaspoon roasted flaxseed powder, 1 tablespoon curd, salt to taste, 1 teaspoon oil or butter. Procedure Wash and soak finger millet overnight. Strain out excess water using a strainer. Then allow them to sprout. It may take approximately 2 days for them to sprout. Once the finger millet sprouts, dry it in sunlight. If there isn't enough sunlight, you can even roast them on a pan without oil. Grind it to make a fine powder. On the other hand, soak split black gram and fenugreek seeds for 3 to 4 hours. Grind it by adding some water to make a smooth batter. Add finger millet powder, roasted flaxseed powder and salt to the batter. Mix it well. Cover the batter and keep it overnight to ferment. Once the batter rises, add curd and little water to adjust the consistency. Take a pan and heat oil or ghee. Spread oil all over the pan using half an onion. Drop a ladle of batter into the pan. Spread batter in a circular motion on the pan. Cook the dosa on both sides on a low flame. Sprouted finger millet dosa is ready. One serving of this recipe will give around 185 mg of calcium. You can have this dosa with buttermilk or sesame seed chutney powder. Let us now see how to make sesame seed chutney powder. For this you will need 2 tablespoons white sesame seeds, 1 tablespoon split Bengal gram, 1 dried red chilli, 2 small pieces of fresh coconut, 2 to 3 garlic pods, 1 lemon sized tamarind, salt to taste. Roast sesame seeds, split Bengal gram, red chilli, coconut and garlic in a pan. Keep stirring it continuously to avoid the sesame seeds from getting burnt. Next, remove them from the pan and allow it to cool. After cooling, add tamarind and salt. Then, grind it using a mixer or mortar and pestle. Sesame seed chutney powder is ready. One fourth cup of this chutney powder gives around 131 mg of calcium. You can have it 2 to 3 times a day with your meals. Instead of white sesame seeds, you can use other seeds as well. For example, black sesame seeds, flax seeds, poppy seeds or niger seeds. Our third recipe is horse gram and amaranth leaves curry. Ingredients required to make this recipe are 1 fourth cup horse gram, 50 gram or 1 fourth bundle of amaranth leaves, half onion, half tomato. You will also need the spices. 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon ginger garlic paste, half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon red chilli powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, Salt to taste. You will also require 2 teaspoon oil or ghee. Procedure Soak horse gram overnight. The next day, strain the excess water using a strainer. Keep the horse gram in a dry place away from heat until sprouts appear. Once the sprouts appear, boil them in a pressure cooker. To boil, add half cup of water, salt, and turmeric powder. Pressure cook on high flame until one whistle. Then, cook on low flame for 10 minutes. Let the pressure release from the cooker on its own and then open it. 
Meanwhile, heat oil in a pan. Add cumin seeds and ginger garlic paste. Then, add the chopped onions and saute it. Add the rest of the spices and tomatoes. Mix well. Add washed and chopped amaranth leaves and sprouted horse gram. Stir it and cook for 3 to 5 minutes on medium flame. Sprouted horse gram and amaranth leaves curry is ready. One serving of this curry will give around 256 mg of calcium. If horse gram is not available, then you can use soybean or moth beans. Instead of amaranth leaves, you can use other green leafy vegetables too. For example, drumstick leaves, fenugreek leaves or radish leaves. Next recipe is scrambled paneer. To prepare scrambled paneer, you require 80 grams or half cup of paneer, half onion, half tomato, one green chili, half teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon garam masala powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder. Take salt according to your taste. A handful of coriander leaves will be required for garnishing. The recipe can be prepared in 2 teaspoons of oil, ghee or butter. If paneer is not available, you can make it from cow or buffalo's milk. To prepare the paneer, boil 400 ml or 2 glasses of milk. After the milk boils, switch off the flame and add 1 tablespoon of lemon juice or vinegar. Stir it well until you see the milk starts to curdle. Keep it aside and let it cool. Keep a cotton cloth or muslin cloth on a strainer and strain the curd. Gather up the corners of the cloth and squeeze out excess liquid from the paneer. Keep a bowl underneath the strainer to collect the liquid. You can use this liquid to knead dough, make dals or cook vegetables. Press the paneer to make a round disc shape. Refrigerate the paneer to set. To prepare the scrambled paneer, heat oil or ghee or butter in a pan. Add cumin seeds and chopped onion. Saute till the onions become light golden. Add chopped tomatoes, green chilli, salt and spices. Crumble the paneer and add in the pan. Mix well. Cook it for 2 to 3 minutes. Garnish with coriander leaves. Scrambled paneer is ready. One serving of this recipe will give around 380 mg of calcium. All these recipes are rich in calcium. It is necessary to include calcium in our daily diet for our good health. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on calcium rich non-vegetarian recipes. In this tutorial we will learn about few calcium rich non-vegetarian recipes. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in our body. 99% of the body's calcium is found in bones and teeth. The remaining 1% is present in the blood. The role of calcium in our body has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for these tutorials. It is necessary to take good amount of calcium through diet. Calcium is found in some non-vegetarian food. For example, prawns, lobsters, bombay duck, dried shrimp and dried bony fishes. Other sources of calcium are milk, milk products, nuts, and seeds. Calcium is also present in green leafy vegetables and some legumes. Let us see some calcium rich non vegetarian recipes. The first recipe is dried shrimp curry. To prepare this recipe, you need 20 grams or 3 tablespoons of dried shrimp, half onion, half tomato, 3 to 4 garlic pods, 1 lemon sized tamarind. One sprig of curry leaves. 
The spices needed for this recipe are 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon red chilli powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, half teaspoon mustard seeds. You will need 2 teaspoons of oil or ghee and salt according to taste. Procedure Soak the dried shrimp in water for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, heat the oil in a vessel and add mustard seeds. As they start to crackle, add curry leaves and chopped garlic. Then add chopped onions. Saute the mixture until it becomes light golden. Next, add the tomatoes and spices. Mix it well. Add half cup of water. Let it cook for 2-3 to three minutes. Strain the dried shrimp in a sieve for few minutes. Add this to the mixture in the pan. Cover and cook on low flame for 5-6 to six minutes. Dried shrimp curry is ready. One serving of this recipe gives around 876 mg of calcium. Our next recipe is Bombay Duck Fish Curry. For this you need 150 grams of Bombay duck fish, half onion, 2 to 3 garlic pods, 1 to 2 green chilies, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds. You also need 2 to 3 kokum or dry mango pieces or tamarind, 1 fourth fresh coconut, handful of coriander leaves, half teaspoon turmeric powder, salt to taste, 2 teaspoon oil or ghee. Half lemon for marination. Procedure Clean and wash the fish pieces thoroughly. Marinate the fish pieces with salt and lemon juice. Keep it aside for 15 to 30 minutes. Let us see how to prepare the coconut milk. Grind coconut pieces with half cup of lukewarm water. Strain the coconut mixture in a sieve. Collect the coconut milk in a bowl. Squeeze the coconut residues with clean hands to extract maximum milk. Put back the coconut residue in the mixer. Add half cup of lukewarm water and grind it again. Strain it. Collect the coconut milk for the second time. Repeat the procedure one more time. Keep the collected coconut milk aside. Do not throw away the coconut residue. I will tell you what to do with it later. Next, grind onion, chilli, cumin seeds, garlic and coriander leaves. Add a little water to make a thick paste. Take a pan and heat oil or ghee. Add the paste to it. Saute it for 2-3 to three minutes. Add curry leaves, kokum and turmeric powder. Mix well. Add half cup of water. Add the marinated fish pieces to the curry. Cover the pan and cook on low flame for 7 to 10 minutes. Add the prepared coconut milk to the curry and stir it. Cook for 2 minutes and switch off the flame. Bombay duck fish curry is ready. One serving of this curry gives around 280 mg of calcium. If Bombay duck is not available, then you can use any of the following. Tengra fish, seal fish, Indian herring fish, Indian jew fish. Let me tell you about the coconut residue which we had saved earlier. You can roast it and store it. This roasted coconut flakes can be added in curries or chila batter. It can even be used to make dry chutney powder with nuts and seeds. It can be added to the flour of rotis and parathas. Adding the roasted coconut enhances the fiber content and flavor. Our third recipe is prawn curry. For this recipe, take the following ingredients. 80 grams of prawns, half medium sized onion, half medium sized tomato, 3 teaspoons of sesame seeds, few curry leaves. Spices required for this recipe are half teaspoon red chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, half teaspoon garam masala powder. 
you will need half lemon salt according to taste and 2 teaspoon oil or ghee procedure clean and wash the prawns properly make a slit on the back side of prawns now pull out the black thread from it this black thread has to be removed from the other side also if found marinate the prawns with salt and some lemon juice keep it aside for 15 to 30 minutes Next, dry roast the sesame seeds in a pan on medium heat. Let it cool. Keep 1 teaspoon of sesame seeds aside for garnishing. Grind the onions, tomatoes and 2 teaspoon roasted sesame seeds in a mixer. Make a thick paste. Heat oil in a pan. Add curry leaves and the paste. Saute this mixture well for 2 to 3 minutes. Then add the spices and mix well add half cup of water and cook for 5 minutes next add the prawns and mix well cover the pan and cook on low flame for 10 minutes garnish with 1 teaspoon of roasted sesame seeds prawn curry is ready one serving of prawn curry gives around 250 mg of calcium If prawns are not available you can also use lobsters for this recipe The next recipe is dried fish powder You will need 15 g or about 1/4 cup of dried fish Examples of some calcium rich dried fishes are as follows Ribbon fish king fish tengra fish etc For this recipe we have used dried bombay duck. Other ingredients required to make the powder are 1 to 2 red chili, 3 to 4 garlic pods, 1 lemon sliced tamarind, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds and salt to taste. Dry roast the dried fish pieces on medium flame for 2 minutes. Keep it aside to cool. Grind the roasted dried fish and the rest of the ingredients in a grinder. Dried fish powder is ready. You can have this powder 2 to 3 times a day with your meals. Quarter bowl of dried fish powder contains 208 mg of calcium. All these recipes are also a good source of the following nutrients: protein, zinc, folate, phosphorus iron omega 3 fatty acid it is necessary to have these nutrients in our daily diet for our good health this brings us to the end of the tutorial